What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 81 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Slip Screen Games weekly gaming podcast all about Valve's portable PC powerhouse, the Steam Deck. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined as always by, by my very good friend and co-host, excuse me, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. And uh, I guess it's time for a weekend at Max Wright's because we got the corpse of Max Wright over here, I guess. No, I'm, I'm alive. I am alive. <laughs> <laughs> Was really ready to see how long you committed to that bit. Yeah, my eyes oh, were already starting to dry bit. out. But, we um... needed you need the glasses that you could have done. You could have yeah. kept that going. <laughs> I anyway. didn't have time to go to my car. Well, I'm glad. I guess. I guess. Uh, Cat is a necromancer because Max is back from the grave yeah, oh, and uh, he's he's revived for another week here on the Steam Deck podcast. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you very much. Ahoy, ahoy. I should say. Um, yeah. Well, well, you didn't full... come up with a new one while you were in the afterlife. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Apparently, uh, God said to me, oh, he's really good. He really likes it. Okay. That was his, that was his att- intended greeting, apparently. So, can we, you know, oh. can we call this like, can we call this Good Friday a week early because Max yeah. is back, you know? <laughs> yeah, I <I'm> probably <laughs> three days later. <laughs> you know, I've, I hear people all the time say that Max is bigger than Jesus. So, that, ma- that makes mm-hmm. sense to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say, I'm glad to have you back, Max, because, of course, uh, on, on this show, I think we are all a family, right? And it's a perfect time for us to get back together to talk about well, Steam Vin, Vin family. Say the same thing. Um, I don't have friends. I mean, it's it, it's not Steam families. It's Steam families. <laughs> Vin Diesel style, you say. <laughs> You're right. I don't have Steam friends, Steve. I have Steam family. <laughs> perfect. What do you think uh, Vin Diesel's Steam family smells like, Steve? <laughs> uh, m- musky and, you know, like woody scent, I think. You know, we, we established that on an episode of One More Thing one time, a long time ago. Yeah. What Vin Diesel smells like. The Did best actually... question I've ever been asked actually... out of pocket. Steve just I, hit I me. Wanna, what do no you context. Think? He goes, what do you think Vin Diesel smells like? And I said, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> 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 fantastic so uh let's let's talk about steve families because this is the steve deck podcast uh because it is available as of uh a couple days ago now right it was on on the 18th was when it first kicked off yeah and uh it is available in the beta client right now and it is a bunch of um some existing features coupled with a bunch of new ones and is uh, a replacement for both steam family sharing and steam family view so if you are somebody who is apparent like i know a lot of our listeners are and you've already been taking advantage of some of these features um definitely going to be important for you to go and uh, familiarize yourself with what's different um but overall it definitely seems like it's kind of a streamlining of a lot of these features i can tell you the biggest change that i'm very excited about it no longer locks down your entire library when you play Mm -hmm. a game so you can play a game and someone else in your family can play a different game Without it being like someone's using your library, your library's in use, which is just right. absolutely game changing. Yeah, a friend of mine would text me, he texts me all the time and goes, Can you just come offline quickly so I can start a game? And then he'll go offline and then I can go back online. Um, and he's like, You, for the last few weeks, he's been like, I've not been able to play anything because you've just been playing Bellatro constantly. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. Like, but now, what, you know, it's going to One work. thing worth saying, though, they are cracking down a little bit more now that mm-hmm. they say that Steam families are intended for your immediate family only. Um, so I think they're going to be monitoring a little bit more. And if you now leave a Steam family, you can't join another one for an entire year. Yes. So you need to be very, very careful, don't you? Which imagine, imagine you join a Steam family and your wife leaves you. Oh, you'd be annoyed with you. That's <laughs> enough whole year before you can join another one. Um, my big question about number one is, concern. You're like, oh god, what's gonna happen oh, with my god. Steam she took, family? She took the kids and the Steam family. How how am I going to exist? Um, my big question is that when it says intended for a household, what does that mean in terms of like, can me, uh, the three of us, for example, do we live in the same family? house? That's no, 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 but that's what I'm saying. Like, well, I mean, you two could genuinely be opposite sides of the same screen right now because of your, um, your lighting, but mm. the, 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 you know, could, could this, is it going to be IP address based? Is it going to be, are there going to be ways around it or are they going to police it at no. all? Because now they have the Steam Deck that it's harder for you to say, oh, I'm in the same household because what if I have a Steam Deck and I'm just, I popped out for the weekend or whatever, you know, how are they going to police stuff like this? Well, I'll let you know what they say about it, Max, um, because do. what we, and, and there is at least one thing here that um, looks like it, it may be a typo, um, but because at the top of the original blog post, right, it says that it is, you Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I confused myself. It's for six people. 
six people is the max for a household. You can start wanting to invite up to five family members, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you get down to um, who can be in a steam family, they say that uh, while we know that families come in many shapes and sizes, steam families is intended for a household of up to six close family members. To that end, as we monitor the usage of this feature, we may adjust the requirements for participating in a steam family or the number of members over time to keep usage in line with this intent. So it sounds like... They're pulling a Netflix. Yeah, it sounds like right now we probably could. But <clears throat> based on that monitor, that the monitoring of that usage, right? If they find that a lot of people are taking advantage of that feature. Like, oh, I, he's he's in another country and he's constantly in the same household. How does uh -huh, that work? Yeah. And I think if they do that, right? If, if, if they uh, do adjust requirements you could find yourself in a position where you then can't join one for up to a year, right? So mm -hmm. I guess that's where the See, challenge I, lies. I guess it's for a household, but I would really like to share my games with my dad and be able to, you know, chop and change because he's got a load of games I want to play. He plays a load of escape room games and I'd like to play those. And I've probably got some games in my library because I've been on Steam a lot longer than he'd want to play. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we don't live in the same house, but he is my immediate family. He is. They don't care. They say, we know that families come in all shapes and sizes, but this is for nuclear families, and we don't care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't care, yeah. Parents Should've... and children. I, I guess if you had a bunch of roommates, you'd be fine, too, right? If you actually lived mm, yeah. with uh, your adopted, uh, your, your chosen family, right? Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. That. But uh, so taking advantage of it there. the way that we have is has not. And I, I guess that's the trade-off, right? Is like, to your point, Steve, uh, there is the immediate advantage right now of like you can both be online but how long is that gonna last right i think the era of of uh freely sharing our steam libraries with friends might might be over based on what they're they're saying here right like I, maybe not soon right but like to your point steve you alluded to the the uh, idea of them pulling a netflix and i wonder if that's not what that's talking about right like it's got to be. It's, it's got to be. I mean, the amount of people that we know that abuse the system, all three of us have abused the system. Yeah. This <laughs> currently. Yourself. <laughs> am, I, am, I abu am I abusing it if they give me the option? <laughs> like, is that Steve, <laughs> when I joined Steam, I, I clicked, I agreed to terms of service, and I have never once, never once broken those. The terms and... of service says you can't use a VPN, but I, I know multiple, many, many people that use a VPN while they are using You're an Steam. Enabler. You're an enabler. You have written something that allows you to use a VPN on your Steam Deck. You, you, do you know what? I'm going to email Steam right now. Yeah, they don't really care anymore. You're getting kicked off the platform, mate. Nice <laughs> try. I'm wearing a wire. So. Oh, my God. It's the long con. Yeah. Who oh, yeah. knew, was, oh, who oh, knew oh, Max, oh. Max was just a snitch? And maybe this isn't really Max. He's come back, and it's just, you know, it's oh Max's evil twin. I am the spirit Steve. of Steam inhabiting the body of Max. You me you're, that you're messing me up now, right? You're telling me Max is like a scroll or something? Because like at first I'm thinking he comes back from the grave, but now it's like maybe Max never really came back. Maybe he's still gone. Mm. What if Max never existed? These all these deep dark questions. All right. Well, you know, I that's that threw me for a loop, but I we got a show to do, so I'm gonna have to think about this between <laughs> episodes, and we'll see if Max. Uh, you know what, Max? Here's the thing. We're gonna finish this episode, and Steve and I are gonna keep a close eye on you. So we'll see what happens if we. Mm -hmm. We'll see if you can pass the test. Yeah, fine. So uh, I think one of the other things that's probably worth um, that's probably worth calling out is like they they have an example of like how it would actually work uh, for a um, like like a real life example, right? And like it says, can we go through a real world example of how a Steam family might share games? So it says, of course, let's say that you're in a family with four members and you own a copy of Portal 2 and a copy of Half-Life. At any time, one member can play Portal 2 and another can play Half-Life. If two of you would like to play Portal 2 at the same time, someone else in the family will need to purchase a copy of the game. After that purchase, there are two owned copies of Portal 2 across the family and any two members can play it at the same time. So that's the other thing that's worth calling out, right? Is like what you're talking about, Steve, is like, I think is a, a temporary window of us enjoying it this way because it sounds like this is going to become the standard, right? And like owning one copy is not going to be enough uh, if, you know, 
you have interest in playing it at the same time. And I wonder if they might not try to find a way to close that loophole. Of- well, I mean, that's kind of how it work- works now. That's how it's going to continue to work, I guess. Like right now, though, it locks down your entire library. You know, like if right. I'm playing, say, Portal 2 and you want to play Half-Life, you can't play Half-Life if you don't have it in your library and it's in mine. It's like this library is in use. Now you'll be able to play Half-Life. Oh, but yeah, not I guess Portal 2. that's true. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Where it's like right now, you're you're already in a position where You've it's one game the entire and... library. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You could at least enjoy two separate games. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's true. I think is 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 a great way of doing it. And but it doesn't necessarily mean if I think everyone in the family would be able to play. So just you basically just become get one pool, but and it, you know each copy will have a, a license. Each game will have like licenses attached to it. Let's say. Yeah. So if yeah. your family has two, then you have two. But I think it also means that six people can be playing games from the shared library. You just yes, can't correct. The same yeah, computer. but if say I want to play a game of Hell Divers with Max, and we're in the same family, we need two copies of it. We mm-hmm. need a copy of Max's, and I might have a copy of my dad's library that I can borrow. Yeah, he's in the same household, and I don't necessarily need it to. That's need a good, to own yeah, in that's my a good library. Point. I didn't think about it that way too. Yeah, yeah. As long as there's like multiple copies across the whole library, you can you can use it two at yeah. a time or three at a time or however many you've got. Yeah. Which is a really good system. They've they've put a lot of thought into it, and the new parental control stuff seems really well thought out as well. That you can restrict the times that people yeah. play. Um, children can request to purchase a game, and it yeah, can your be dad can say no if you try decline. and buy something that's exactly <laughs> yeah. so funny. Yeah, can't play any of my dating sims anymore. Right? No, he's going to say Locked no up. to that. No, no I, I do think this uh, this is like it's something I didn't think needed a look at, but. Now they've sort of laid some of this out. I'm like, yeah, that is good. Actually, I do, I do like that, and I do wish that, that was, you know, I do like how this works. Yeah. I'm going to look forward to using this. So, one of the other uh, things that's worth calling out too, because uh, you know, you were talking about like, I guess, um, kind of the way that it works is that you're sharing a license of a game, right? Like, but because of that, each game is still linked to an individual Steam account. So, like, uh, there's a question here that says, "What happens if my brother gets banned for cheating while playing my game?" And it says, if a family member gets banned for cheating while playing your copy of the game, you, the game owner, will also be banned in that game. Other families are not, uh, members are not impacted. So that's the scraps. just another, you know, a, a thing I guess to keep in mind is that like, because you are sharing games across um, accounts, if a person who is playing one of your games violates uh, terms of service and gets caught, then you also uh, are going to be penalized for that. Just but, say that someone else hacked you, like uh, a you know, an Apex Legends. Just, but that wasn't me. It was yeah. uh, a flaw <laughs> in the game. I didn't someone cheat. Hacked, hacks, glitches, <laughs> and hacks. <laughs> so yeah, any um, I don't know, any other thoughts on this one? Because I, I think I think by and large, it's like it's great. Yeah, yeah there's it's nothing. Like a big, yeah. It's like a big win. There's no downside to it. Not yet, anyway. There might be a downside in the future that you can't do what you've been doing with your friends forever. Mm-hmm. And it probably will be like IP restricted, I would imagine, yeah, in the same they, way that Netflix is. If they take away standard library and replace it with this entirely, and it does have that sort of thing, I guess maybe the maybe you could possibly use a VPN to get around it, but that's probably detectable. You're probably going to, you know, by fudging the system, you're probably going to screw yourself over in any way. But yeah, I look forward to seeing if it is possible that, that I can, that my, you know, I wouldn't have to mess around to play games with my friend or play my friend's games on my system while they mm-hmm. play my games, yada, yada, yada. Yes. On the topic of your dad, before we move on, um, I watched him make a Christmas cake on YouTube, Steve, yesterday. Was very, it was very nice. I really His enjoyed Christmas that. cakes are the best, I will yeah. say. He feeds it with brandy for like six, yeah. six weeks or Do something. Do you have Christmas so. cake in the UK, uh, in the US, Pete? No, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> this, but... is, this was Max's one handbrake, don't worry. No, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm less... So, uh, so I understand you're interpreting my pause as... What is a Christmas cake? And my yeah. pause is: Your dad has a YouTube channel. Where he does he's have naked? a YouTube channel. What yeah. the hell? He, does he comments every single that. week. He does all sorts of stuff on that. He does like you know you'll find him baking. Give me the link. Give me the link. Find, or you'll find him reviewing a lawnmower. His lawnmower mm-hmm. review has so many views. It's Yo, oh my god, dude! It I has, gotta I gotta go watch your dad's Christmas. Honestly, cake it's crazy. I'm the lawnmower the lawnmower review has like twenty one thousand views. I don't know why. Mental. People want lawnmowers. Because it's good content, Steve. You know it what? It is good content. That's what I'm and saying. He was, he was doing boat model boat building for a while, and he was getting like 21K views, uh, 7K views on the videos, and then he just stopped. Stopped doing them. And I don't know why. He, just walked, you know away. This is, he walked away Andy's from the game. Time. This is Andy's time to come back and prove to us all 
motorboat videos. I've God, been, he's got I have massive been motorboat begging, videos. begging Steve to set up a situation where I can podcast with his dad at some point, like for years. I, I, we got to get Andy on the content, man. We got yeah, if, if, if my dad comes up and visits to the new house, I'll set it up. You can talk to him, all right? Perfect. Yeah, I want an episode. Yeah, I want an or, episode. I'm telling Aaron you, episode. next time you go visit him, leave him with a microphone, set him up, you know, and then a week when you're off, dad steps up to the plate, you know, like, let me get, let me get Andy on the mic. Let's do it. <laughs> get him to produce. His production is fantastic. You know, it's, it's yeah, got the good yeah. music. It's got like speed ups. It's got text over it. I, I yeah. know exactly you, you hit me, you hit me with the link, right, Max? You got, you, <laughs> yeah, you, sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna watch yeah. that. I'm he make, literally I'm... comments on every one of our videos. So just he click does. on his name. That's why I want to go support him. You can click on his name, but I'll send it over to you. Yeah, he's a real one. He's a real one. <laughs> I, I love I I love Andy. I love Andy's work. So do I. Like mm, Steve is, too. you know, obviously <laughs> his best work. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but I, I, I don't know. My sister would have something to say about that. Well, I don't I'm not familiar with her. Get on the you show. Know? So Get you on know, the show. like yeah, you know, I've I, we I don't get her on the show. She's been playing Hell Divers too. She was telling me about. It. She loves it. She thinks it's great. On. Steve, mm. if you want to get, I'm happy to facilitate a podcast where it's just your whole family. That's, <laughs> that sounds like that would be a great episode. I'm all in for that. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get us back on the road here after that <laughs> that just cascading handbrake. But uh, Max, I think you brought this one to the table. I know this is a game you and I are both excited for uh dragon's dogma two two specifically two. right is out tomorrow as of yep. this record so as, as of the time you're listening to this uh out today and mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't run on the steam deck no which i think <laughs> we, we kind of knew and i think some people when they first booted up the because i booted up the character creator and i was like okay because this is cool i don't think this is indicative of how it's going to run on the actual steam deck and i've made all my characters on steam deck and been like Cool, really looking forward to this. I do not expect to be able to play this game on the Steam Deck. Now, what mm -hmm. um, I was sort of in, you know, intensely waiting, because I know that it's going to be limited to sort of not locked, but around 30 FPS on console. So I've been like, okay, what are we going to do with, uh, you know, what's it going to do on PC? The, the specs are um, to get 30 FPS, 1080p, or 30 FPS, 4K are like the minimum and the recommended specs. So there is no 60 FPS sort of like recommended specs or anything like that. There is no uh you know it was, it was going to be a tough game to run i put a bunch of new shit in my computer i basically built an entirely new computer is a mm. triggers broom why, situation. Why, why did that happen what happened uh, <sighs> i tried to put in one new part and then i just broke the other part and then it cascaded oh. into like you know into a triggers broom situation where i was like if i put this one new oh, part yeah, in, yeah. i've since then replaced the ram i've replaced the motherboard i've replaced the, the storage i've done everything basically um all to get a new graphics card in what is that anyway what's, what's the uh the... So triggers triggers broom is a is a reference to only fools and horses oh, sorry. an old tv show no, no, in the uk that, in case if people listening are like what the fuck is triggers sorry broom? ship of yeah. theseus that's more that's Thank a more you. yeah i was gonna more say widely I, known... I was gonna say is that a british version of the ship of theseus it is it is the british ship Jesus of theseus Christ. Triggers broom. you guys just make anything up huh yeah, we do. Yeah, we do it better. We do it, we do it shorter. It's a, really it's a great good episode. episode. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's a TV um, show. Okay. Yeah, I've, show. Had, yeah, I've, had yeah, yeah. Same, I've had the same broom for 20 years. I've replaced the stick. I replaced the brush head. It's not the same broom then, is it, Trigger? <laughs> like, but yeah, I've had the same for 20 years. Great show. Great show. You okay. should probably give it a watch, Pete. That's a good anyway, bit. That's so, a good bit. <laughs> I've replaced all of this stuff in my computer. Um, and it turns out the one thing I didn't replace the CPU uh, is the limiter here. It's it's there is not a PC. I read <laughs> one of the reviews that said there is not one, a PC you can build today that will run it at a smooth 60 FPS in the town, um, the main town in the game, the sort of the first main town. It sort of dips to like the 40s because there's just so many NPCs. People have been able to get the frame rate up a little bit by killing NPCs. Only problem there is you end up not being able to complete quests or not being able to sort of do certain things. But you do by killing the NPCs and stopping them from going and doing their daily tasks. You boost the game up. Anyway, to link this back to the Steam Deck, the game runs at about 15 FPS on like you know everything what, at low. I think we can also link it back to this week's Flip Screen Games podcast, which if you've not listened to, we talk all about the PS5 Pro and why the CPU remaining the same in the PS5 Pro is going to be a bottleneck. Because it is. It's the exact same reason that yeah. Max has yeah. just identified there. Yeah, there's no way that Dragon's Dogma 2 on the PS5 Pro is going to run any better than it does on the PS5 if it's going to have the same CPU. It's just, just not going to happen. Um... But but yeah, it just runs at about 15 FPS on the Steam Deck. There's just not enough of anything in the Steam Deck to get it. I am quite happy to be able to sort of stream it from my PC to the Steam Deck, so I can still enjoy it. But I will still not be getting like a locked at 60 FPS. You know, even if I try and get it to 1080p, 
I'm still going to be sort of having dips. And, you know, I've accepted that that's okay because I want to play this game. The game looks great. There's, there's obviously a lot going on because it's not like Capcom to release unoptimized games. You know, we've seen, uh, especially on the Steam Deck, you've seen Resident Evil 2 and 3 run perfectly. Um, you can sort of get the most out of Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Rise on the Steam Deck. Uh, Resident Evil Village, I was so impressed with how that ran. Resident Evil 4, after the demo was a bit shaky, the game actually turned out really well on the Steam Deck. So, and it's, it's all the same engine. It's all the Reach for the Moon engine. RE engine. But what a stupid name, by the way. Reach for the Moon engine is RE, whatever. Um, and yeah, so I, I think it's a, it's a, it's sort of clearly going to be a game that is, um, there's a lot going on. So I accept that to be able to play it. And um, yeah, the question of what I wanted to put out to this was, I've really just talked for a block there. Pete, do you have anything to add to that? Sorry. Because no, no, <laughs> I've just okay. stormed through. No, no, I, please. I, I, I think that I yeah. want to add that the Reach for the Moon engine always makes me think of S Club 7. Just yeah. putting that out there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, this moon. Uh, that's another. That's probably another British uh, British thing for you there, Pete. Do you have S Club Seven over there? Do they make their I, way over there? I'm, I am familiar with S Club Seven. Good. Yeah, it's Good. just Fine. I like. I expect these kind of handbrakes from Max, but Steve, I can usually <laughs> count on on this show. And I just, I feel like we're like this is like the gas leak episode. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever at the start, he was like, I've really got to get this done. I've really got to get this done. And I'm just like, nah, we're just talking about other things now. Um, so what's the question? You, sorry, you, the question you, is, you're, right. you're telling me, okay, Dragon's Dogma runs 15 FPS. What's the, where are we going? What's the question? The question is, what do we think about sort of future AAA release, releases for this year? Because I had intended on playing every single thing that comes out this year on Steam Deck in some way, shape, or form. You still can. You can stream to it like you do it. Yeah, yeah, But I'm talking like, you know, I would yeah, like the option to be able to do either, you know, whether it's natively or not. Yeah. Do what do we think about the rest of the twenty four? Do we think this is indicative of what's going to happen for the rest of the year? No. I've given a little list of games on here that I'd like to sort of call out, um, which a lot of them are actually Xbox games, it seems. But so we've got the rest yes, of the year. We've got Avowed coming out. Hell yeah, 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 I know what yeah. you're going to say. Avowed is coming out. Hellblade Two is coming out. Indiana Jones is coming out. Star Wars Outlaws is coming out. Black Myth Wukong is coming out. Space Marine Two is coming out. I then forgot to look at any more, so that's the sort of six I've gone with. Um, do sure. we think all of those games are just going to run? Fine, or do we think that this is maybe going to be the start of the end? We've said this before, but you know, I, I, I think some of these are going to run fine. I, I don't think all of them will, but I think we've seen the CPU be in the bottleneck here. Maybe RAM's been the bottleneck before. Maybe the GPU is in certain games. Something like Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, I think, is probably going to be targeting 60 frames per second. And the fact that a game can target 60 FPS means it's probably going to run really well at 30 on the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. Any game that I think is targeting that, I think Avowed and Hellblade 2 are probably also going to be targeting 60. I think we can expect to play them on the deck. We're going to have to make compromises in resolution, in frame rate, maybe in in, um, in effects, uh, in shadow detail, things like that. But I think that'll be playable. I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. I think it I think it depends on the game. Because um, I, I think, like, the kind of framing of the question as, like, is the beginning of the end is, like, I don't know... I'm sure there will be a point where, like, there is a, a, a cutoff where it's, like, most AAA games don't work anymore, and we're, like, we're ready for a Steam Deck too, right? Mm -hmm. like, that point will inevitably come. But <clears throat> I kind of think for the entirety of the Steam Deck's life cycle already, it's been a very, like, will they, won't they with each individual game. And I think a lot of it comes down to what that game is. You know, to, to the example you brought up in Dragon's Dogma, right? Like, two um thank you that game has a, a level of depth to it that i'm not surprised that the steam deck can't handle because considering mm -hmm. that like you know again right considering that uh it's it's gonna be locked at you know it's tar targeting 30 fps right on uh on current gen consoles and that it is you know you made the point of like there's not a cpu that can run it at a steady 60 fps to me it's like what what possible hope does the Steam Deck to have a pl pl to to play a game like that? Whereas you know um, something like Elden Ring, right? Like two years ago was is it was a, a new modern game, um, but uh, was had a, a a lower target and is and that not was cross gen as well. So it right, was like exactly yeah, it was available on on older older tech exactly. I... And, and I think that there are a lot of examples of games that are going to come out that are like that we may consider triple A that are like still on the lower end of that spectrum when it comes to targeting like graphical realism and some of the things that like the steam deck can struggle with right mm -hmm. but like there are examples of games like that like like spider-man for example right which is like if you play it on max settings it looks incredible but like 
the 30 FPS, you know, downscaled version is great too, you know? Um, so I think I could see something like Avowed being an easy one, right? Because it has like a, a more stylistic look to mm-hmm. it. And it, I think, is targeting a, you know, overall kind of like older style of game. Right. So it's like to me, that one seems like it'll probably be right at home on Steam Deck. But like, <clears throat> I don't know, like, Steve, you brought up like Indiana Jones. That's one that like I could kind of see going either way. Right. Where it's like maybe it will eventually run well, but I also wouldn't be surprised if that's one that at launch is like just doesn't quite work right. You know, like in this in some of the same ways that we saw with like The Last of Us Part One. Right. Where it's like you have this very kind of like graphically intensive game with a lot of shaders and and you know the compromises you have to make to make it run make it look kind of funky and you know yeah the, i mean that was that was a different game. that was like a bad port and the, the beauty with microsoft games is they target pc from from the yes. beginning sure. and mm-hmm. so they do have that scalability in mind and the uh, you know i would imagine this is probably going to be in the id engine which we you know id tech but, we see uh, that I, that's at, really great look at starfield though right like starfield is a game that came out it's an xbox game it came out targeting pc day one it is a not a, a graph super graphically intensive game not a game that ran at 60 fps mm. and at launch it did not run on steam Deck. It, again that's it- that's the cpu that's bottlenecking it. it's a big right. open world game and that and that game has to remember where you place objects where everything yeah. is in the world right spawn all these individual elements in so that is a really really cpu intensive game and that's the problem we've got here is that you know the cpu is is the bit of, is a bit of a bottleneck um and it's fine for for most games but but games that are kind of really trying to bring in a lot of assets in any one time in the case of dragon's dogma 2 it sounds like npcs are a really big kind of point of contention if you if you murder them then you're uh you're kind of fine but um well, if you murder so, them, then you yeah you have like a day to talk to them, and then they're gone forever. So it's, you... it's a shame that like there's no way around that because when you killed all the um when you killed all the traders in Elden Ring, that you could just take their their little orb and like yeah yeah. yeah. Take it I, to do, the I, shop. I do think this is designed to be. I think because there's no like quick save and things like that in this game. The the design of it is very much like what you do is final, and you need to be you need to be comfortable with those it's consequences. Really, yeah. As an example, I saw where it was like. They said that in in like game like Skyrim, for example, or I didn't name Skyrim, but that's just an example I'm going to give you. You could go, what happens if I jump down here? You quick save, you jump off, and you go, oh, I died, or oh, I didn't die. And then you can just quick, you know, load the quick save. You haven't actually explored there. What you've done is you've just, without having to um, sacrifice anything, you've just taken a little leap and gone, oh well, that was nothing. Whereas if you do this in Dragon's Dogma, you're like, right, I have consequences now. I have to actually, yeah, deal with this. Or, or you, and, and that sort of, exactly, yeah, yeah, because it's like. In D&D, there's sometimes when I've made a mistake and I've gone, oh, and I go, well, I can't take that back because I've got a DM sitting there looking at me who's going to say, Mm-mm, you've said it and done it now. Um, and I think that's that's important. And I think Elden Ring does a lot of that as well, where where it saves every second you're saving things. So everything you do matters and has consequence to it. And, um, and yeah, I like that. And uh, I can't remember how we got here, but I like that a lot. Well, yeah. I, I think we're talking about like the complexity of the systems yes. in that game and, and modern I think, games yeah. yeah yeah and i think that's going to be the the deciding factor for for whether or not a triple a game is going to be playable on <clears throat> on deck natively right but i think to steve's point you know there are a lot of tools to kind of circum uh navigate that limit if you have another console or if you have a, a gaming pc as a companion to your deck right like um you do have workarounds where you kind of can take advantage of those more intensive games and still enjoy them you know, on your on your Steam Deck. I mean, you can look at every other RE engine game that's ever come before Dragon's Dogma 2, and it's runnable on the Steam Deck. Not so even I, just runnable, fantastic. Yeah, like, run, they well, run well, fantastic. You know. so I, I kind of see that this is the outlier, and I think it's because of the type of game it is. It's that seamless open world. It's got mm-hmm. all of these things that are being pulled in at any one time. Maybe we'll see the same problem in Monster Hunter Wilds next year. I could see that that being an issue, that I don't know that that's going to be playable here in the same way that Monster Hunter Rise was playable. Um, So maybe we'll have issues there. I think Unreal Engine 5 games are probably going to be a bit of an issue, depending on the Mm. level of complexity there and whether they're kind of targeting their graphical fidelity. I think, I think like, I I think that's going to be part of the problem is that, like, I I, I do wonder if that isn't going to be part of kind of like, the, the future of of triple a games right is that like 
especially <clears throat> as Unreal 5 gets more and more um, usage, right? That like depth of worlds will be a bigger selling point than like trying to push graphical fidelity because well you look for the depth of world in say something like Baldur's gate 3 and that runs fine so if it, it really Does is it dependent on yeah it runs great well yeah, I think it's the first but... two acts as soon as you get into the third act it just all right well scrolls. i never i never all got right. there right and, me neither but, and, um... it's, and it's with a lot of compromises too though right like and, and it's like i think like your mileage may vary on what like fine is right because i you know i, I kind of hit a point with that game where i'm like oof, like this is a really special game i kind of want to play it on something that can handle it a little oh better, yeah see i'm not, I'm not that fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to play things with compromises you know the last of us is one of my favorite games i played part one all the way through on the steam deck yes i know there was compromises there but i still had a really great time with it mm -hmm. same with the resident evil games i played re2 and re3 remake on on the deck i had no problems playing it at a yep. slightly lower resolution and, and turning off some of the particle effects it was absolutely fine yeah um, and, and I, whereas think I could have played do. those on i could have played those on my ps5 or my series x and had like ray tracing and all of these bells and whistles there but i just didn't see the point i had a great time playing it on the console or the device i wanted to play on sure yeah. and i think like that's you know i think for a lot of people you know that that might be a fine experience but i do think when you're talking about like triple a games like i think most people want to enjoy something that is you know like cutting edge right on some level and and i understand not wanting to play you know um particularly if you do have right like a, a a current gen console or a gaming pc and like you have the ability to play something um in a you know um something that is supposed to be premium in a way that feels more premium i totally get not wanting to make those compromises and being mm -hmm. like 30 fps i'm fine with but sub 30 right or or, or like you know 30 with a like yeah. very low resolution and no shadows and and no you know it's like you're missing there out on a, a limit, lot of you know, you know, i don't want it to look like arc did when when it first launched on switch yeah. you know yeah. like i, I want or, it to be i want it to look like, all right there's probably a big list of games i could have gone for right there of when it runs on switch um outer wilds outer worlds yeah, that got, that got redone, but... you know Outer worlds they had a new team to look at the port and it, it ran fine really on switch yeah I didn't know they redid it. Fair play to. So you know, I uh, I think I think this is going to be a case by case thing until it isn't right, and, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's that's kind of always been the state of AAA gaming on the deck. So I'm I'm not surprised to see a game like Dragon's Dogma not work, but you know, I don't think that that means that any of the games that you were looking forward to playing are are not necessarily going to be on the table. So hopefully that's some here's a little. Here's a little uh, little reveal here. Mask comes off. I knew that it'll work. I just wanted to have a conversation that we could use as a as a <gasps> nice cheeky headline if we need to. But, wow! Um, look at that. It look worked for Alan Wake two. Consummate it professional. Wake two. Consummate professional. Yeah. Look at this guy. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna jump into the Steam docket and get into some. And here's the thing, Max. You know, I appreciate that. Man, you jumped in front of so many people. You have so many questions in the Steam docket, and you're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna exert my power as a host over these yeah. hardworking yeah. listeners. Yeah. We do it every single week when we do <laughs> That's what we do. Uh, I just happen to put mine publicly first instead of directly to you. But whatever. There you, go. you know, I no, no, I appreciate you. it. I appreciate it. You know, you're 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 getting out there. You're you're happy to play the heel, and you know that's sometimes that's what you got to do. So sometimes sometimes you know you got to be tough. All right, so let's let's uh, before we get into the Steam docket, I'm gonna run us through our housekeeping real quick here to remind you that this episode of the Steam Deck Podcast is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of march they are of course arnold j rimmer christopher blends gabriel hasselmeyer aka asobi snackigo steve stompy susan likes cats and also boobies ty the dude voodoo vic and wakahula thank you all so much for your support over on patreon.com slash flip screen games y'all the reals to the real and we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows remember if you want to go and show your support just like they did if you want to jump into our discord and keep the conversation rolling between episodes if you want to write in a main topic or a question for the steam docket just like a bunch of people did that we're about to get into right now there's you could do all that and much much more over at flipscreen.games however you choose to get involved or show your support head over there click on some stuff it helps us out a lot more than it costs you and thank you for tuning in let's get back to the show thank you. we actually have two very exciting episodes next week um Pete, i don't know if you want to mention that we're going yeah, to have two yeah, of course. special please, episodes please. 
I forgot so to mention them week... on the other shows. Thank you, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So next week's episode of the Steam Deck Podcast is going to be a very special episode uh, where we are interviewing Abu Bakar Salim uh, from Surgeon Games, who is currently working on um, Tales of Kanzara Zao, which we might remember we spoke about on our Steam Next Fest demo uh, episode. We're going to be talking to him about the game, which is officially Steam Deck verified now. Um, very Let's excited go. to talk about that. That's going to be next week's Steam Deck Podcast. Uh, very excited to play that game as well. And also, um, Pete has a special episode of Flip Screen Games podcast next week where we're going to be doing a review, our sort of second big review of a game we're both very excited about. I don't know if you want to mention it, but um, what the game is, but I'm just going to... Are we allowed? Are we allowed to? I, I don't, don't know if we we're allowed, allowed to, but we're doing uh, an exciting one next week. So there'll be a bit of, you know, two exciting episodes. Yeah, we're... Hmm. We're pre yeah, just don't say it. Don't say I'm not going to say it. it. I, don't want to, yeah, I don't want to reveal the embargo date either. So um, Yeah, but, game, but so. I'll say this. I can say this. I'm playing a redacted game. It's a game we're very excited about. We will talk about it on the show next week. Uh, the I believe the Flip Screen Games podcast will be delayed to hit embargo. I won't say yeah. when that is or, or any other qualifying information that could get us in yeah. trouble. Uh, but thank you so much for the code. Can't wait to talk about it. Yes. Uh, Sorry, so, back to the show. Back to the show. Let's jump into the Steam docket. Um, hmm, where do we want to start, boys? Any jumping out? Oh, of I like Scale Speeders, the next team that must have a VRR screen discussed because this may, in fact, you know, alleviate some of the issues with not being able to play these AAA games because if it's got a yeah. VRR display, it may not may not feel so terrible. What do you guys think? I have never actually experienced VRR. I know you have got, you guys have, you specifically have Steve with your Xbox. I remember you saying Wonderful. about how you turned it on. I've never used a screen that does it. I, I've never sort of benefited from it in any way i assume what it means is that if i'm similar to how on the steam deck if i'm playing a game at 45 fps and i set the screen to to that it's going to run better than if it was at 30 fps because it sort of matches up there's like a so the game yeah the game the tells FPS. the display what frame rate it's outputting right. and the display will be at that exact so it's less rate. choppy because it's it's not got a load of like missed frames yeah. and things like that i'm yeah. with you cool the, yeah the, i get that basically the the difference that I've noticed, or I guess as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, is that like, I think that's a big part of why uh, playing on current gen consoles for me has felt so clean and seamless, right? Because like, even when there are uh, moments of like frame dips or whatever, right? Unless it's like a moment where the game is like seizing up, it's a lot less noticeable because it just kind of smooths everything out right so when you have those kind of minor adjustments you know you just don't notice them as much xbox players have experienced this last generation on my one s it had amd mm -hmm. yeah it was great i loved it it's super um, cool does this mean that there's gonna be any input delay because surely there's got to be like if it's saying this is the refresh rate no, it makes it, no it it makes it, it'll yeah. make it better because you can you can uncap the frame rate or you set a higher cap right so say the game almost hits 40 fps mm -hmm. you set the cap to 40 fps if it dips to like 36 or 38 then the screen will dip to that and it'll make it feel a little bit more responsive okay. and, and you won't have any either tearing if you turn off v-sync or it feels less laggy because it's not doing the kind of triple buffer on the v-sync and trying to make it match the display I feel like it, 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 it leads to less moments where you like feel the game chugging, you know? You like sort of don't feel like you're walking through honey, you know, mm -hmm. like when yeah, you're trying to yes. play a game and it like dips, you don't, you, you kind of feel less of that when um, VR is enabled and the game's yeah. like being a little bit laggy. All right, I, I then yes, I'd like that. I can't see any and downside to this. So. And it's worth noting that the ROG Ally has this, the, um, I think the Lenovo Legion Go has this. The MSI Claw, I think, has this, which you shouldn't buy. Um, oh. worth, worth checking out the Forks' video on YouTube for that. It's basically the Intel chip in its garbo. Um, so, yeah, that's not, that's not great. I'd still like to get my hands on one at some point and test it myself. But, uh, but yeah. Um, and I think this leads nicely into Johnny Key's question. Should I purchase the ROG Ally this year or wait for the Steam Deck 2? Wait for the Steam Deck 2. Yeah, I, I saw Overkill uh, review of the ROG Ally uh, came out today, and it's, it's exactly with my experience of using the Ally recently. A friend of mine has well, two of my friends recently bought one. I've been sort of using theirs on and off just around their when their houses or at work. Um, the Windows experience just is not there, and I just do not see how anyone would want to engage with Windows on that in any kind of way. I think, frankly, um, though, like if you're interested in in an ROG Ally, 
I would just get a Steam Deck OLED because the Steam Deck OLED yeah, I, is, a, much better, is device, yeah. a better device than the Ally, which you're considering right now. And we have no mm -hmm. idea when a Steam Deck 2 is coming. And like, I wouldn't yeah. assume that it's soon, right? Like, I think it's next year. I don't think it's 2025. You think it's think next year? A, yeah, I don't think we see a refresh this year. I think yeah. it'll be next year. I could see AMD putting some chips out. Um, just yeah. and we get some RDNA 3 in there, especially for if they're some, doing that for the PlayStation. For some reason, like, I, I 2026 feels right to me that feels like a long way away they, they said 2025 i'm sure at some point or they said no, it, was like, it was like at least 2025 okay, fine. That, you know yeah i can see that happening but i, I think i've said that on this no. show i've said it on the flip screen game show i've said it on loads of different shows don't wait for the next thing to buy this thing because when that thing comes out people are already going to talk about the next thing if you want the thing now just get the thing now don't i am don't i am kind of well, waiting for mm. I, I i did do that and i waited for a switch though switch because i was like do i need a switch oled should i wait for the switch too I still not bloody here. I was going to get one. Like, I was day and date on the Switch OLED, and I don't regret it. But also, yeah. I think that's different because you own one. Yeah, right. Like if if Johnny owns a base Steam Deck, then I would just wait. Right, like yeah. you don't need to upgrade right now. Um, if if you're it is nice though. If you're not sure about it, like I it is very you. nice. I think it's worth it. <laughs> I I I don't regret my my upgrade at all. Um, that yeah. said, I get waiting. Um, in that scenario, like what Steve did, right? Like that, that made sense to me at the time, even though I made the opposite decision. Um, I think for this, it's like not knowing when the Steam Deck 2 is coming. Say even if it does come next year, like it's quite a bit away. Like I think you could buy an OLED now, get a ton of use out of it, sell it and buy a Steam Deck 2 later if you're concerned about that, you know? But the ROG Ally is going to be just as, is going to be obsolete just as soon as the Steam Deck is right now. Yeah. So I don't know what you're. I don't know what advantage. I, I actually could see it being obsolete sooner than that because it. If they're a hardware company, it's not yeah. like Steam where they can utilize the fact that they're selling games to people and they've got the Steam OS and they're, you know, it's it's for, it's deeply ingrained and linked, uh, with Steam. Uh, Asus need to sell more hardware in the same way that um that I and E need to. They yeah, another like, one. That's why we're all constantly always seeing refreshes from I and E because they're just a hardware company. Yeah, they just they they want to sell you that one thing, move on to the next thing, which is also, I guess, where I where I worried about PC handhelds in the first place, and why I was like, well, I believe in the Switch because I know we're going to get maybe two of them, and we had three of them. But when the Steam Deck was first announced, I was like, there's no way they support this, and fair play and they have, and I'm that's why I'm so firmly entrenched in the Steam Deck camp because they handled it like a console. I just don't think these companies that release, you know, a trillion gaming laptops, trillion gaming PCs, I and E do a trillion trillion gaming handhelds every year. I, I can't imagine we're getting more than a year out of these things until the next one's out. And then you're always going to be like, oh, well, what about the next one? The next one. Same with phones, you know, whereas, um, yeah, the Steam Deck, you, you can sort of buy that and trust that you've, you've got a good amount of time with it. It, it has a, a life cycle that feels more akin to a console. Right. And I think that, like, there's yeah. there's some comfort in that. Right. Like it, that it, it is a, a form factor that's going to even if it gets a refresh. Right. That, like, you're going to be able to be along for the ride for a certain amount of time or whatever. Right. I don't think you. Yeah. Have I, any with the, uh, and the I ally. think now, now that the the OLED model's out, and we know that's like the definitive version of the Steam Deck, and the screen's so great, and it feels so wonderful, and the battery life is great. Like the the ROG Ally, the battery life is trash when when you're trying to run uh, games that are just you know you've got to push that TDP up there in order to play those those higher AAA games that maybe the Steam Deck can't run quite as well. Mm -hmm. You've got to remember that's also a 120 hertz display. If you want to power that, it's going to be really difficult. It's a higher resolution display. It's 1080p. If you want to power yeah. that again, it's going to be tricky. So it's like, you know, it's a it's a shame. It is a shame. So here's where we're at, gang. We've got a really good question here from Trendy Brendy about Epic Games 100% revenue cut uh, that got announced this week. I definitely want to give that one more attention than we have time for today. Uh, unfortunately, I actually think we should probably talk about that on Flip Screen Games podcast about like the industry shift in general and is the seventy thirty split sure fair? Sure, yeah, yeah I, maybe, so. Let's move maybe it. so. But yeah, we're definitely going to want to talk about that one. So you're you're going to want to tune in on that one because I, I it's I think it's very interesting, obviously, for what it means for Steam, and I I'm sure we'll talk about that one more. Um, as the story develops as well. Um, obviously, I don't know that we'll have time for questions next week since we've got the interview. Um, but I did want to just end on uh, a question that we answered last week uh, from Scale Speeder. That was, what did you buy in the sale? Uh, and then listed a couple games that, uh, that they grabbed. Um, Max, you weren't on. So did you get anything in the sale? 
And I picked up a couple of things. I only got Balatro and it was not on sale. So that's 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 all I got. <laughs> I, I, I got nothing. I've been playing Balatro and that's all I've been playing. So yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that too. Uh, but I also bought a rebought Hades because I'd like to consolidate down from the Switch onto the Steam Deck. So I'm going to move my save file over there. I've got internet back again, so I can do that now. Memory me. Uh, Goobies I got because I have been really enjoying uh, uh, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor and I think this is a more complete sort of. 1.0 version of that style of game so i would like to give that a go at some point and i got narita boy because it's it really seemed like my jam and they were all very cheap i think that was like less than 20 15 pounds in total i think so good three games hours of content there um yeah that's that's what i picked up um nothing else really tickled my fancy purely because balatros really got me by the balatros so yeah, it's a little dangerous, I gotta admit. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I picked it up and was like, ooh, I gotta not play this, because I'm gonna oh. play it. I got this other game I'm playing for review, right? So it's like, I don't need a distraction. But uh, We didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it. I guess you haven't played much of it. We can talk about it next week. Oh, we can't. We got an interview. Ah, when are we gonna talk? We'll talk about, we'll talk about on Flip Screen. We'll talk about yeah, on Flip Screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about yeah. Flip Screen. Well, here's the other thing I think we can do too, right? Is like, next week we got the interview. I think week after that, if we don't have big juicy piece of news we can get through this nice backlog of questions yeah we can we can have a nice juicy catch up on what we've been playing we can yeah. have a, a nice chill episode after a couple busy weeks how's that sound yeah 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 that's good. Right. Okay with great that. Good. awesome I look great forward good. To it. good work high five everybody good work today bam. 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 Before, bam. We, before we finish up and wrap up i would just want to say stream hiss not feeling worse by long friend time friend on spotify or go onto the so band camp's website and buy it i've had um the end of the last song uh thank my friends for being i've had that in my head uh, while i was making dinner today so uh go and go listen well, to, thank you so to, much to my pete's man. band you're very sweet thank you very much i forgot to plug it on the other shows um as well so no, you did hmm. I, I i keyed you up to plug it oh did you okay cool good good we great. did it last week you i it. remember that one no i remember that oh, one did you not I, do it this week? i don't Sorry, know that we did it on the other shows but anyway oh, okay. yeah. Hey, hey it, it was an incredible release. So to, to those of you who did go and listen, and I know it was many of you, many of you reached out and said very nice things um, or went and bought a copy, which is so nice. So thank you so much for all the support. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, okay, so great show, everybody. Good work. Gas Leak episode uh, was, was, a, was a hot <laughs> one. <laughs> an all-timer, one for the books, to be sure. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us on another episode of the Steam Deck Podcast. Remember, if you want to write in and be part of the show, if you want to get your questions in the Steam Docket for our next big mailbag episode, or please write in with questions for our interview next week, uh, any of your questions about... Um, uh, please, Max, give me the title again. Tales of Kenzera Thank you. I, like, every time I mix the... Um, I'll say Tales of Zhao. Uh, yeah, or, yeah, You yeah. know, and I'm like... I'll get it right. So thank you. I'll have an official call out for questions now when once this episode's gone yeah. out. So we yeah, can, we'll uh, we'll post like a, 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 a proper thing about it and everything. But please, if you've got questions, um, if you are also excited for the game like we are uh, after Steam Next Fest, um, please write in and uh, we'd love to have you guys be part of the interview. Um and thanks again for tuning in for the show. Remember flipscreen.games, that's the website where you can go for all the links to all the places we are all over the web, however you choose to get involved. We thank you for tuning into another episode. For the crew, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. Over there has been Max. We'll see you next week.